Good afternoon. Um, put a lot of work in yesterday. Uh, it was a very, uh, very good day, you know, really to, to talk about some really important issues dealing with our program. It was really uh, a very messy game, as we all know. Um, you know, our play wasn't, wasn't up to par from what we were expecting ourselves to do. It's, uh, you know, you don't start the game the way uh, we started it with a chance to, to really do some positive things on the road. Um, you know, the first two plays, we have a, you know, a misread and a tackle for loss, and then we fumble the second play, and then the first play defensively is a touchdown. So it's a pretty tough start to a game. Um, and uh, couldn't quite find rhythm early uh, in that game uh, until about the second quarter. Matter of fact, it was about 12 minutes, 47 seconds. Uh, we had our best drive of the game uh, offensively, uh, where they went down the field and scored and got seven points, made it 20 to seven. You know, defense holds them in another series. Uh, we get the ball back. We get a chance to uh, get more points. We get add three, you know, before the half. So it's a 20 to 10 game uh, at halftime. Uh, so I, I, I was encouraged by, you know, at, at least at that point, you know, it was 20, we we're down 20 to nothing early in the second quarter. And we, we were able to respond and answer with two 10 points of unanswered points on their side. So, you know, we had, a, we had our chances. You know, we had our chances in this game. And really our best chances to really get in the game was in the third quarter. Um, they started with the ball. You know, our defense did a really good job of getting them off the field and uh, punt snap over the punter's head. Uh, we get to a, a chance to start in a deep in the red zone with an opportunity to score and to to get it to 20 to 17. And that's unfortunate that that doesn't happen. Um, but our defense goes back out again. They get a stop. Uh, they punt. Chase Penry gets a decent return, and we start another series on the plus 40 early in the third. So again, two opportunities to get the, the differential down to three points. And we didn't, uh, we didn't come through. And that's the unfortunate thing. We had our chances in the game uh, to really change the complexion of the game, really the temperature of the game, swing some momentum, you know, create some momentum. We had opportunities to do that. And, uh, you know, that was our best opportunities right there in that third quarter. You know, the fourth quarter was, you know, was challenged as you saw. Um, but, you know, we only scored 10 points in the game, which were the only 10 points in the second quarter with opportunities to really close the gap, and we haven't done that. So we, we got a lot of work to do. We had, we had that discussion with our team. They understand, you know, the, uh, you know, where we are. You know, we're in a hole, but we, we can get ourselves out of it. You know, we can. If we play better football, we've had good practices. Uh, we got to make sure what we're practicing actually gets uh, – we, we actually – play that way that we do in practice in games, you know, and I think that's what with the young football team for the most part with some of the young guys, including our quarterbacks that are you know, still in the younger stages, in, in my opinion, uh, we, we have to settle in and be, play better football. And I know we have it in us, and we're going to continue as coaches to get the most out of them to that we get that breakthrough. So uh, big week, as we all know. Um, Going back to going up to Minnesota for this game, um, it's a good opportunity for us to to kind of fix some of the issues that we're dealing with, and we're trying to continue to develop and 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 get better as we go. And you know, there's still a lot of football to be played, uh, which I'm excited about. We got 10 games to really start to show some improvement and and prove our mettle a little bit and get going before the conference race starts. So. Um, there's definitely a lot of football and stuff to be motivated to play very well this week. So that's our plan, and um, I would like to open up now for you guys. So going off of that, um, obviously the scores have not looked good, but as you mentioned, uh, this game and also the last game, you guys were in those games in the third quarter and had chances to you know, go ahead or, or be in those games. Do you focus on that with this team, say, rather than the final score and say you were in these games in the second half. And then the second part of the question is, what do you guys have to do to, to convert on those opportunities so that you actually capitalize them? Yeah, that's, those are the, the, I think, really good questions, Brian, too, because it's, we, we've done, we've had really good practices. And we, we just have to get that, um, that translated to, to what we play, you know, on Saturdays. And, and that's, 
you know, that's that's going to come. I think it's gonna, really going to start to show. And, and, I, and I think there's an urgency about doing those things correctly and, and getting ourselves uh, quickly into the form where we feel we're capable of becoming. So, um, but you're right. We were in both of those games at some point, but then we end up losing it uh, with some faction of, of things that happen. You know, we could be, you know, turnovers. You know, I think both this game, we, we you know, it was, it was wet, you know, the whole game. Um, you know, given JT's, you know, obviously he didn't have a great statistical game, but, you know, it wasn't all about his start. I think he did try to settle in and make some plays. He still did some youthful mistakes uh, in the game, but he did also have six drops by receivers, you know, so that doesn't help, <laughs> you know, trying to get in rhythm about getting your offense going. So it's it's kind of, it's not necessarily one position, right? It's, it's, it's just one of those things that we have to play with more continuity, more efficiency, and everybody doing their job more effectively. Over the summer, you mentioned that you felt like you had 30 quality leaders on your team. How have you seen those guys respond here uh, the last few days? You know, they've been very upset. You know, they've been very upset because in their minds, they, they feel they're better too. So they're, they're on the same page with, with how the coaches feel. Um, you know, it's, it's surprising to them when they see themselves, you know, and they say, well, wow, well, I know that I, we practiced that and I did that correctly in practice, and I don't know why I did it there differently, you know. So we're going through that a little bit with some of the youthfulness. But they, they'll, they'll grow and emerge, and they know that they have potential. A lot of, I hate that word, by the way, <laughs> but they have it. They do. It's just that now they have to really force it out of themselves. And I think the pressure as that leadership group you're talking about, they're, they're, pressing, you know, they're pressing their thumbs on everybody else now about everybody being more detailed to the best that they can be so that we are able to get the product that we're looking for. Coach, Minnesota's a team that beat you guys 30 nothing last year. Obviously, you have Mike Sanford at offensive coordinator this year. Is he able to kind of give you a leg up in terms of scouting or tendencies ahead of this week's game? He can give us really some insight with personnel. I think that's – and that's valuable. You know, that's valuable insight, you know, particularly – he knows, you know, been, been probably with a lot of those guys on their defensive side and going against them in practice. So I think there's some definitely some, some insight about from that standpoint. Um, I know they have a different offensive coordinator, you know, because he's here. Uh, the defensive coordinator's still there. But um, so I, he does have some familiarity, but still it comes down to execution um, and us being able to, you know, get all 11 of our players doing everything correctly you know, more consistently. So I think that's the, that's our biggest challenge. But I, there is some advantage, I mean, at least some familiarity. I think that's the, our advantage. At least he knows a lot of their personnel. Yes, Sean. Hey, Carl. You mentioned the continuity. Uh, does that make you at this point more inclined to start JT in, in this game coming into that, given the conditions, given, like you said, the settling down after that start? Um, and secondly, if not, why not? Um, and how much has that position responsible for some of those inside the 30 red zone things you're talking about where you're getting there and, and not getting over the line into points? Um, I thought JT did okay, uh, and he, he will tell you that too. You know, he's, he wished he had plays that he performed better, uh, particularly the fourth and two. <laughs> um, we're going to continue to evaluate that. We, we just don't feel that there's any separation. Even what he's done, what B. Lou did in the first game, we feel like this is a really important week to, to really press them both about who wants this job. So I think that's more of our attitude. You know, they both had a chance to, to lead the offense. You know, they both had some, some inconsistencies. Now is, okay, let's go into this week and let's, it's, it's a competition. You know, who we got we got to get better. You know, they both have some things to shore up. So we we really want to get back on the grass and, and get going and, and then make some type of determination later in the week. Great question though, Sean. Thank you. Carl, I know you said after the game that you're not gonna complain about the schedule that's in front of you, but just I just wanna get your take on what your philosophy is in approach to non conference schedules and 
how difficult it should or shouldn't be. Obviously, last year you guys played Northern Colorado in an FCS school. This year you have a really tough schedule. You have two Power 5 opponents in Air Force, who is as, uh, as good as most Power 5 teams this season. How do you approach you know, non-conference schedules based off of where you're at as a program and, you know, going off that? Well, I, I think we, we, we need these kind of schedules, to be honest with you. We, we do, even though I think there's some people that have a different philosophy about scheduling wins, you know, so to speak. I'm not going to, don't, don't throw me under the bus for that, but, you know, we, some people do that. And I think for us, it's really important for us to get this program to to grow and get larger than than where we currently are right now you know it was at that point in time in the you know back when i was here in the past you know we you know we had you know the kind of schedule that we're scheduling now so i'm really kind of more s familiar with that i would say uh, but it's it's it definitely gives us measurement opportunities to tell us where we're at and where we need to go and i think that's something that you know we need you know, coaches, players, we need all of that to, to really get this program to grow and get better. So I'm, I'm not against the kind of schedule we have. I think it's a good thing. Coach, to kind of piggyback off that question, do you think in today's day and age a coach has a chance to develop a program, I mean, and go through learning, growing pains, or is it a win-now mentality? <sighs> it's... <laughs> It's probably more of a win now mentality. You know, I would say that's more of the sentiment on both levels, professionally and in college football. Um, and we're we're trying to do our very best. You know, as we as we're in that moment right now. You know, like I said, we're we're we've shot ourselves in the foot a couple times, and now we got ten games left to really start to turn this thing around and that's we still have a lot of football left we have the season of our conference left so there's still a lot of football for us to emerge and get involved with but we we need to really have a sense of urgency about fixing things her in a hurry hi coach uh, you mentioned continuity within the team you're taking on a really dominant um, rushing offense in minnesota what specifically do you want to see improvement on going into this game where you can say, we did a good job today, even though the stakes were pretty difficult. Yeah, well, I, I, I felt, you know, I know the, the statistics say a lot, you know, in terms of when you see it at the end of a, end of a game, but defensively, we did show some life and we, we played and had some good series. We've had some really good stops. Uh, we had some turnovers. We had a couple big stops, just like they had a big stop against us that, took us away from cutting the lead to three points. You know, we had a great goal line stop in the second quarter where Jalen Sami, you know, gets on a fumble and, you know, stops a tremendous job, I mean, a tremendous drive. So I felt like our defense gave us chances in that game Yes, last uh, Saturday. They gave us chances. Now, offensively, we got to take advantage of those opportunities. We're just not playing the, I call the complimentary football that we should. We didn't gain many points off turnovers. I think we only had three. You know, we had from a, you know, Trevor Woods hit a great hit on the runner. He coughs it up. We get the ball back. We, we don't get anything, but we get three points out of it. You know, that was all we got out of three turnovers. Well, they scored 14 points out of their three turnovers. You know, so we're, we're not maximizing our opportunities. So those are the things that we're really focusing in on is playing better with each other and understanding the significance about critical area play you know, we have to get, we have to produce. We have to start uh, getting the, you know, playing at a level we're capable of playing. You know, this going into the Minnesota game, that's as good an O-line and as good of what they do as you're probably going to see mm -hmm. with the apologies to USC and Oregon and some of the other bigger places. Uh, does it concern you in the context of, like you mentioned, how that complementary side of it hasn't landed in the defense in the fourth quarter Look, it looks like it kind of goes off a cliff either because they've been out there too long, they've had to keep fighting, to your point, and, and they're trailing. Um, or is that a technique thing, some of those big chunk rushes that have come late <laughs> in games for you guys? It's probably both, Sean. The yeah. last two weeks yeah. Been saying that. yeah, I think you're right. It's, I think the, 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 part, the morale part of this game, the fun part of this game, is when both sides are playing well and they feed off each other. Right now there's nothing to be fed off. That's, that's our challenge right now. I mean, if, if the offense is rolling and they're scoring points, that gives a little bit of 
boost for the defense and vice versa. The defense is getting three and outs or getting turnovers. I mean, that's great for the offense. So that's what I mean by the complementation of being complementary. We haven't done that effectively yet. And that's kind of it's been showing up in the fourth quarter, right? In the third, you know, in the second half of these first couple of games. So we, we're working hard on understanding that. And, and it's funny, and I'm answering this question this way, because I've asked a couple of our defensive guys yesterday. I mean, they get excited when the offense scores, right? That's that's the part that, that I think the 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 energy and the momentum and things that you build you know, with your team, they, that's the the feeding process that happens, you know, in the course of a game. And just, we've just been so short of that. You know, that's why it looks different right now. But as soon as we I, – I, I feel deeply that we're going to get this thing going. Uh, and they'll, they'll catch rhythm, talking about offensively. And I think that's going to obviously help us, you know, not only from a football team, but it's going to actually help our defense too. Play better. How do you keep units in from and young guys who are emotional, invested in this as they are, from pointing yeah. at each other? We, we, you know, you get that question in the NFL all the time. Clicks and you know, they're pros. They do that. Yeah. But there's a natural tendency to be like, hey, we're holding up, we're holding up the rope. Help, help us out here. Right. And that's what we talk. You know, the things that I was telling you about in our press conference is how the discussion was with our team. So they see that. They see how this the whole process works. But. You know, the young players are the young players. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many guys that I, you know, that, that are in the game and all that, but it's like, you know, it's a, their first road game and it's in wet weather. And it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, they see their offense and, you know, there's a lot of things that they're taking in at the first time. Um, I remember when I was a freshman, my first year playing, and even though I was a backup, but I played some, it's like that first college game, you know, particularly on the road, it's a, it's a different atmosphere than high school, you know. So it's, there's, there's that, too, that they're learning, you know, there's just the different elements of the game. But the, they're, they're, uh, they're in it. You know, they, they want to be able to help this football team. Um, a lot of them, you know, feel like they can play right now and, and they need some seasoning and some work to be able to help us. But, uh, but I am excited about their attitude, about how they're, they want to they wanna get back in here and, and do what they can to help us, you know, be successful. Carl, along those lines about the defensive front, um, they've done some good things for you in both games. And as Sean mentioned, look like maybe getting worn out a little bit as the game has gone on. What, uh, you know, what's their challenge this week? What do they have to be better at this week uh, going against a team that, that has run the ball really well so far? Yeah, they run it well. You know, they, Minnesota is, is, a, is a veteran team. I mean, they're a good team. Uh, they got a secure quarterback that really understands their offense really well. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, they have two, I think, two excellent runners. Uh, the one, their starter, didn't play against us a year ago, so he's back. Um, and then the other one is who played very well against us a year ago. He's back, so they have depth and they can run the ball effectively. They have a big offensive line. But, you know, we, we do feel in a, in a lot of ways the kind of game that we just went through, which was a deep rushing attack, different schemes, but deep rushing attack, is really going to help us prepare better for this week, you know, going through the week we had last week. Um, different schemes, I get it, but uh, the physicality of the game, um, you know, we still have the same assignments and things that they got to continue to work on and improve on. And, you know, there were some times where I saw some really, like you said, there were some really good defensive series in there in the game last week. So there's some stuff that defensively we'll, we'll build on that that will help us you know, defend and be better this week. But it's a it's a dangerous offense because they have skill at the wide receiver position, skill at the backfield. They got an excellent tight end, and they got a six year quarterback. So those are you know challenges you know among in themselves right there. I was hoping to ask you about both of your starting safeties. Uh, do you know Isaiah Lewis's status? And then with Trevor Woods, do you know if there's any type of review process on the targeting? Or there is, and we, we put in a review for Trevor's uh, case. Um, you know, it's a low probability that it would be overturned, but we, we're going to give it a shot. You know, we didn't think that he was trying to do something with, you know, poor intent, but it's worth appealing, you know, and we're going to appeal that, that ruling. Um, we'll see what happens, but it's the, the, the history of it is it's not, op it's not a – it's not an advantage <laughs> for us on the appeal. But, um, you know, Ilu will be back. He's, he just had a, you know, a laceration in the game. You know, he got stitched up, and he should be ready to go.
And Trevor will be, if he doesn't, if we don't win the appeal, he'll be ready to go in the second half. Alex and Dion had almost even carries on Saturday. Do you expect that to be the case going forward? Because it seemed like both of them had some solid runs, but especially Dion on that on your early touchdown drive was able to kind of get things going. Do you expect kind of an equal partnership going forward with those two guys? We we do we do until we, you know no one's really kind of emerged like oh my goodness keep this guy in the game, you know just haven't had that look yet. But they both have played, I think I would say. Admirable, you know they they both play pretty well, um, so we'll continue to feed you know use the system that we're currently currently are doing right now. We when when we start getting better offensively in terms of you know continuity and longer series and stuff like that, I think those telltale signs about who to play more will kind of show up. We just haven't had enough snaps to really get that done yet. I was curious, <clears throat> two words you said. Messy issues. Is that the stuff we've just talked about in all the film stuff, or does it go deeper for you guys of things you're trying to clean up and you had meetings about and are trying to work on when you use those words, messy issues? I wonder if you can. No, it was from this game. The, it was conditions, a la, you know, obviously. We had some missed tackles and, you know, stuff like that we definitely need to clean up. So, you got a question for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> A couple uh, personnel things. Alvin Williams is not dressed the first two games. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's going on with him? Uh, Alvin has been, um, from my, on a campus perspective, he's been um, under a suspension right now. Um, so he's, um, he's under that type of uh, situation right now that's dealing with campus. So, um, so we, we, uh, he's currently not with football right now until this, this uh, process goes through. I have no idea. Okay. It's, it's all on the campus. And then uh, the other thing is you mentioned the other day briefly after the game, you know, Drew Carter, Owen McCown. So with this quarterback thing, is it still, do you still see it as Brendan versus JT or, or at what point do you consider actually, um, you know, letting Owen and, and Drew be a part of the competition and consider playing them? Well, that's something that we have started to visit about because uh, you know we still think that that B Lou and, and JT are, are very very capable you know we think that they're starter types for us we know that both uh, Owen and Drew has flashed too you know in, in some of those uh, the work that they've done through training camp and even right now so uh, you know we're 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 going to be prepared for, for anything and everything, but really it's still down just to those two that we're really dealing with right now. Um, and, and we're going to continue to bring those other ones along as well. Uh, sticking with the quarterback position earlier in response to Sean's question, you made it seem like after this week you might want to have a starter going forward. Is that, is that true? And do you, how long do you imagine you would be comfortable going forward with maybe JT will play, maybe Brendan will get some snaps as well? How, when do you want to have a solidified starter? I, I can't really put a timeline on that's, and it's not. It's because they both haven't separated enough to say that. And I was answering Sean's question. It was really based on, you know, both of them had a chance to play. Both of them have things to work on. This is a week that we're still in competition, man. We got to figure out who's going to going to elevate themselves this week to get the nod. That's kind of how that process is for us right now. But they both had a chance. We're still keep creating, you know, keeping that competition moving forward. But is going through this practice sessions this week, and, and we'll come to a decision at the end. So I think that was what I meant to, to say. Is that what? Okay. Any other questions for Coach? All right. Thanks, All right. Coach. Thank you.